we need to catch up. But we cannot catch up if we are just leaving our women at home. We cannot catch up if we're sending our children to the madrasa to learn a Quran. We cannot catch up if half of the education, or, or not half, but 100% of the education or 90% of the education is about Quran and hadith and fiqh. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? I'm thinking, let's let's think of it this way. If it was like Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu was the one who actually made some kind of advantage or some kind of development in the human society, uh, making uh, humans uh, do less of kind of this labor work and focus on more quite advanced work, I feel like we would be having different critique to this. I don't see a problem with uh, having the mindset of building and innovating from a technological perspective as long as the way the community is being ruled is maintained so i think the problem is how the transition is going to be done not the not the uh, difference in a state in itself so if the transition is done in a in an appropriate way that preserve the community as we know it do you still think this would be a major issue the technology is something separate it's a separate development um that we can isolate but it's this isolation is impossible. Like the two are connected, very closely linked. You can't have one without the other. Um, you cannot develop technology without having a certain kind of psychology. And once you develop that technology, it is also going to affect your psychology and the psychology of people and the organization of your communities. Once you have industrialization, that leads to urbanization, that leads to a population density that is very high and it's very different from the natural state. You cannot industrialize without creating these urban centers. Um, and if it's possible, no one has showed how that it would be possible. Um, because people need to be, many people need to be in a central location. So this is something that uh, and then when you get get people in, in such a confined space, then they are not with larger family networks. They are being at atomized. So that affects their psychology, that affects their morality, and on and on. There's a, there's a domino effect. Um, there's also the question, like if you look at Islamic society, is all innovation bad? Is all innovation something that we should oppose in Islam? I don't think so. Like you mentioned, like if um, one of the Khulafa discovered uh, some new thing, I mean, they did like in warfare, they discovered uh, or they used certain new, even in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you had in the Battle of Khandaq, uh, building like using, uh, because this was the recommendation of Salman al-Farisi, uh, he had this from his Persian background, this new kind of technology of, di build, of digging a ditch. You, you dig kind of a ditch, a deep, deep uh, trench. Trench is the right word. And then this is can be used in war. This is a technological development. It's a new thing. And the Prophet Sallallahu used that. Um, other like Menjanil, uh, the kind of catapult system to launch uh weapon or launch projectiles against the enemy these are new things that were developed or accepted by muslims so then you could say well if if the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is uh accepting a, a trench then why can't he why can't we have you know uh full industrialization and accepts you know cell phone technology and nuclear technology and 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 uh, here I'm not making any kind of Islamic ruling or fiqh ruling. I just want us to think more deeply about what is the cost of these kinds of changes. What is the cost of developing these kinds of technologies for society, for Muslim society? And so far, I can't see any evidence that you can separate like these developments. You can't get modern you can't get modern technology as we see in the west without also getting modern society they go hand in hand you can't have one without the other uh, they're mutually dependent on each other um and there's not a single counter example there's not a single counter example 
uh, something like feminism. Feminism is a product of industrialization as well, because you need, in order to generate enough, uh, you know, in, in order to have enough factory workers and in order to have enough engineers and scientists and doctors, you have to have, you can't exclude 50% of the population. You need to have women in that workforce. You need to have women to do the kinds of things that are necessary to free up the kind of innovation that will drive uh, technology forward. So you need female education. If you have female education, women have to delay getting married. They delay getting married, so they have fewer children. They are more independent. They are more um, equal to their husbands. That destabilizes families. That makes that produces this kind of independent woman phenomenon that we're suffering from today throughout not just Muslims, but throughout the world. So feminism is a product of industrialization or is a, is a necessary component. And this is explicitly what the Muslim um, leaders or the, the leaders of the Muslim community in the 20th century said. They said, look, we're behind the power curve. We're behind uh, the West when it comes to our technology, our industrialization. We need to catch up. But we cannot catch up if we are just leaving our women at home. We cannot catch up if we're sending our children to the madrasa to learn Quran. We cannot catch up if half of the education, or, or not half, but 100% of the education or 90% of the education is about Quran and hadith and fiqh. This is a waste of time. We have to send our sons and our daughters to learn science, learn mathematics, learn uh, uh, you know, how to use electronics, use the computer, on and on and on. So you have to change the educational system. You have to start mandating. No, you have to send your children. You have to send your daughter. All of this stuff, um, these social developments, they implemented them in the Muslim world. Be for what? For the purpose of industrialization. And they were right, in a sense. They were right that you could not achieve industrialization. You couldn't have the Muslim world have, you know, this electronic, uh, electric grid and, you know, water treatment plants and, 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 and. You couldn't develop that within your country if you didn't um, create this educational system, this secular ed educational system. But what is the effect of that secular educational system? You secularize society. You, sec you, you take people away from Islam. Uh, and that's exactly what's been happening in all of these countries. And Egypt is, is one of them. Iran is one of them. The Shah of Iran, Shah Reza Pahlavi of Iran, this was his mindset. Like, we need to industrialize. How do we industrialize? We need social reforms. We need social reforms because what's holding us back is Islam. And these traditional practices, we have to become progressive. So this is, these things are connected. You cannot separate them.